Postmodernism can be determined to be a period after modernism. So I, I would say that, again, depending on whether you're talking about architecture, art, or film, you could argue that the postmodern period begins somewhere around 1960 or the 60s. Uh, and during that era, we have a change in art where the kind of experimentation becomes much more extreme. Uh, Andy Warhol goes from just experimenting like an abstract expressionist, where they're not even doing figures anymore, to saying, well, I'm not going to try to do anything so artistic. I'm just going to you know, repeat the pop culture. I'll do soup cans, Brillo boxes. Um, I'll take comic book art, and I'll just simply redo it. Uh, and, and Warhol was very famous in his interviews for saying, just, just tell me what to say, and I'll just say it. You know, I don't, wanna, I don't think that can do anything original. So one aspect of postmodernism is sort of this sense of exhaustion. It's all been done before. Uh, it's almost impossible to do anything new, so don't even try. Another aspect of postmodernism is this ability to collage a bunch of different elements together and to utilize your sense of history to portray uh, art in a lot of different ways. Uh, the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper, I think, is a probably early postmodernist work. Uh, they can take early 20th century British music hall, they can take Indian music, they can take uh, Stockhausen and sound collage, they can take hard rock, they can take uh, roots rock. Uh, the Beatles are pretty adept at just imitating a whole variety of styles for their own amusement and obviously for the amusement of their audience. So their ability to sample different uh, aesthetic styles and historical periods is really one of the hallmarks, I think, that uh, makes postmodern art what it is, and that is that it can do a lot of different stuff and it can try to use a lot of different styles simultaneously. Another aspect of postmodernism is kind of the sense of laughing at itself, not taking itself too seriously. You we'll probably see that beginning in films like, or TV shows like Batman, where there's this high sense of camp where all the people acting in the show are in on the joke and Batman says stupid stuff like uh, come on Robin, let's slide down the bat pole. I mean, you know, obviously sexual connotations and obviously just dumb. You know, two guys wearing tights, you know, pretending to be superheroes. Now, the irony of course is today we take that stuff really seriously, but what we start with is kind of a sense of fun and playing with it. And there's a sense of fun about uh, Michael Keaton's uh, version of Batman and, and Jack Nicholson's Batman through Tim Burton. Sort of a less of a sense of fun now in The Dark Knight, which tells us that maybe postmodernism is coming to an end. Uh, in television, postmodernism, postmodernism accelerates. We get television shows in the 90s like Buffy the Vampire Slayer that are collaging different styles of television together. We get sort of Buffy, which is part teen drama and part horror drama put together into a new hybrid form that's part teen drama and part horror drama at the same time. Uh, in film, we get Pulp Fiction, which is sort of a um, Faulkner-esque approach to uh, crime fiction. Uh, you know, you have Bruce Willis and John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson doing some really interesting takes on um, the crime drama, but the story is split up into parts where it's a little bit harder to determine what we're seeing, when we're seeing, and what time it all happened. Uh, Run Lola Run is an example of simply splitting time. Uh, Memento, a uh, film in which we see the story backwards, is another story that plays with time. Very postmodern experiments in time. Uh, more advanced, perhaps, than Citizen Kane. Maybe more successful, maybe not, but they're, but they're different kinds of experiments using time. But there are aspects of postmodernism that are maybe coming to an end. Uh, the sense of playfulness, like we find in Twin Peaks, is, seems to be evaporating from modern TV. Uh, modern TV seems to be taking itself a lot more seriously. So, um, so that's at least one aspect of what postmodernism can be assumed to be, at least in the arts and popular culture. Another aspect of postmodernism is this ability to collage.